So that's the title of this morning's message. I entitled it universally because we as men can be a band of brothers and make a difference in our kingdom. If only 10 of us were to step to the plate and be the men that God has called us to be, we could change this whole area for the kingdom and glory of God. So here's our text. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14. You may be seated. Charles Spurgeon says this about Jesus as a man. He is not only God and man, but he is the man, the man of men, of all men, the most manly, the type and pattern of manhood. He will be the test in his own person. For if a man be like Christ, that man is right. But if a man be other than Christ-like, that man deserves to be condemned. Strong words about the power and the impact of the gospel to transform men into being more and more like Jesus Christ. And so that's the standard today as we, as we gather on, on this special day, as we, we seek to try to understand all that God wants us to understand as men, it's just my hope that we as men would just have ears to hear. Be willing to consider that there may be just a little bit that we need to pray about, we need to consider, and we need to let God change in us so that we can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells us because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And so here's what I want you to pray. I'm just going to take some time. Y'all are going to get quiet, and then I'm going to pray over us all. But it says, please, please pray that Father's Day will be a call for dads and all men to stand up for Jesus to be strong, spiritually mature, and men of God. But then I also ask us to pray today that all of us will be God's people. So just right now, ask God to speak to you, ask God to speak through me, ask God to speak to us, and then I'll pray in just a second. So if you would, just pray. Father, we sit quietly and pray because you're a faithful God who answers prayers. Speak to us. Change us. Awaken and renew us to the power of your Holy Spirit that we would be the men and women, boys and girls that you allow us to be in Christ Jesus our Lord. No more excuses. No more going through the motions, but being who your word says we are. I thank you that greater are you that are in us than he that is in the world. I thank you that there is power in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you can move hearts and minds to yourself in this room today because you're going to have to do it, God, and I pray that you will. No more excuses. No more going through the motions. Help us as dudes be God's men. And, and Lord, I pray that the ladies and wives would let us be. That they would be respectful towards the authority that we hold and the responsibility that we carry for your namesake. Oh God, do a work in this room that only you can do. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory now and forevermore. Speak to us, God, I pray, for Christ's sake, amen. It's always an honor to preach the Word of God. It's, uh, quite frankly, something that I took for, took for granted for way too many years. And so anytime that I get a chance to preach, I'm, I'm thankful for that and thankful to get to do that here at the bridge. One of the things I want to say to you, uh, don't ever trust me just because I say something standing up here. I'm just a man. 
If I ever contradict the word of God, the word of God is right and I'm wrong. And the challenge for us is to become a people of his book. We're not going to get to plead ignorance at judgment. Well, I didn't know. Yeah, you did. On Romans 1, 20, it's clear that men are without excuse. And so coming to a, a day like today can be hard for some of us. Some of you are grieving the loss of a dad. Some of you are hurt by the absence of a father or the abandonment of a father, or the neglect of a father, or the indifference of a father, or the immaturity of a father. So I understand, and I just want you to know that, that, that I, I empathize with you, and you'll hear a little bit more about my story when it comes to, to the absent father. But God is always the faithful father. And so as we consider Father's Day, let's put our eyes and fix them on him. That's why I asked Josh to sing, Be Thou My Vision. You see, we can't be what God wants us to be without knowing Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We just can't do it. Okay? We can try to clean ourselves up. We can try to fix ourselves up. But at the end of the day, the flesh is too weak. It's only because we're new creations in Christ that any of us can be different. So here's a father writing some advice to his son. And it's a powerful passage just to avoid sin and, and how you can avoid sin. But, but I want you to think about this in your own life. Be ready for the temptations that are going to come before they ever come so that you know what decisions you need to make so that you don't get caught up in them. He says here, ponder the path of your feet. Then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Ponder or consider your paths. What is it that you want to do with your life? What is it that you want to do in your marriage? What is it that you want to do in this relationship? Ponder that and, and begin to identify the snares and the temptations and the lies of the enemy so that whenever they do come, you'll be able to stay true and faithful to the Lord. Listen, nobody, nobody goes into to sin and addiction and thinking, I can't wait till I'm, I'm in bondage to sin. It, it's just we got an enemy that has been doing this a lot longer than us. He's not more powerful than our God, but we allow him power into our lives that we shouldn't allow. And so as we consider, he says, man, prepare for life and its destructive ob obstacles in advance. Think, think about the godly way that you want to live. And that's what I hope to be able to help you guys with today. Now, I'm blessed with four children. My oldest daughter, Chelsea, is here with her husband this morning. What a great honor and a great blessing to, to ever have my kids with me. But they'll be the first to tell you, he ain't perfect. But I will also tell you that I am better because of Michelle Smith. Ladies, you play a vital helping role in helping your husband. I mean, there's stuff we just don't get. We just don't get. Y'all get, we don't get, we wish we got, but we didn't get. And so you become our vital helper so that we can be the men of God that God wants us to be. And so, so be your husband's helper and not his herder. But these four children of mine, two boys, two girls, all throughout our lives, they were growing up and, and uh, we developed this system about their guns. And so they, as they got, grew bigger, as they grew stronger, we developed a system that went from squirt guns to bazookas. How big is my gun? How big is my, you know, so, so we would just get up there. Well, my hope is, is just like physical growth is natural, that our spiritual growth would be just as supernatural as well. So that we would develop spiritual guns that are more like bazookas than squirt guns. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You see, this teaching today about being strong can start from the day that you begin to raise your children. And today I want us to be God's men who love, lead, and serve people just like Jesus. That he would be our vision. So let's begin uh, in our text. 
Be watchful. That means to be alert, to be on your guard. To be awake and vigilant, to be wary and to be cautious. I mean, let me just tell you the best illustration in this room right now. Our security team. They all over the place. Y'all don't even know. They are vigilant. They are watchful. They are paying attention so that we could be under protection. Okay, so that we will not be harmed, so that there can, be, there can be security at every place. And so that's what he's saying for you to do in your own life, sir. That's what we need to, to make sure that we are, we are watchful, that we're on our guard against the destructive situations, people, scenarios that can ruin our lives, but not only our lives, the lives of those around us. I mean, children are a gift. They're a heritage from the Lord. They are our stewardship responsibility. And if we want to have multi-generational impact for Christ, then we're going to have to raise them spiritually. And we're going to have to be on guard to all the so-called innocent things that are destroying their lives. And so when you listen to a song like Be Thou My Vision, it shows us riches. In our culture today, sports, academics, prestige, position, recognition. This is destroying the lives of so many of our children. We've got to be watchful. Listen, if you're paying the bill on this phone, it ain't your child's phone. You get to look at it anytime you want. And if they don't want to let you look at it, they get to pay the bill. But guess what? I'll do what my mama did. I bought my own car and she took the keys away from me to ground me one time. As long as you continue to live under their their roof, there is some accountability responsibility. That's not this sermon, but uh, I, I just almost started preaching there. Just got a little too excited. Be watchful. So think about the places the people, the attitudes, when you're tired, when you're going through financial difficulties that may cause you to act in a way that's less than biblical. So just be alert, be watchful. So here here are three things I want you to consider. First of all, men, reject passivity. Be a do, not a doormat. Choose to lead and be a loving leader in your home. Don't be like Adam. Adam blamed Eve and God for his sin. As he just sat back and just let her go and do her own thing. Man, step to the plate, man. Be a protector and a provider in your home. Model, ladies, wives, respect for your husbands. Don't train your kids to be disrespectful to your dude. Because you're undermining your own desire to see your kids raised to be godly kids. Speak respectfully to them and about them. Don't let there be this division that Satan wants between you and them. Your first love in a marriage is husband and wife before the kids. If you let the kids come between you two, then you are already causing divisions. Okay, that's another sermon. Number two, reject pornography, lust, and flirting. Marriage is the only place where you have one woman where you get to have those desires and those needs fulfilled. Hallelujah. Job chose to make a covenant with his eyes to not look lustfully on a woman. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard today. A lot of women don't wear very many clothes. They wear an underwear as outerwear now, and it ain't no big deal. And so you got to learn to bounce your eyes. I mean, literally, man, I mean, there were some college girls. You know, I was in a college town for 19 and a half years, and, and there's just a little bit more looseness when it comes to that. I mean, they were wondering, why are you always looking at my forehead? I'm trying to make a keep the covenant with my eyes. That's how it come. So, so understand that it is a temptation that, that, that we have to struggle with as men. I mean, we are visual creatures, and it just impacts. I mean, we, we like looking. I don't have to have a woman half naked to lust, man. So I have to be really careful when I'm around that. So be alert 
to the lurking sin around you. Number three, reject pride. When you're successful, when you're growing, when you're maturing, God gets all the glory. It's because of God that you're able to see that transformation. Okay, and when you blow it, confess your sin. Be humble enough to admit your mistake. When you, you first of all get right with God, but then if you have offended someone else, you go get right with them. And typically it's in our own families, men, that we struggle the greatest. Apologizing to our spouse, apologizing to our kids. Listen, sir, if you don't apologize to your kids when you blow it, then what you're training them is to believe that they have to be perfect. If you don't admit that you never mess up. I know some of y'all fired up about coming today on Father's Day. (laughs) But reject pride. When you blow it, apologize fully and humbly. Don't say, yeah, but you did this. It don't matter what they did. Your response is your responsibility, is what Emerson Egerich says. He wrote Love and Respect. <laughs> Feel like to blame it on her when I can. Reject pride. Stand firm in the faith. That means to be persistent in the gospel and the truth of God's word. Know what you believe. Know what you believe. No matter what you face. The Bible is clear that if you got Jesus, you got it going on. God's got your back. He is there. He's in the middle of helping with it. So make sure that you know what you believe. Well, two, two things I want to say about that. Number one, read or listen to and study the Bible. Okay? You've got to reject ignorance of God's word because it's not an option, okay? Reject blaming the church because you don't know God's word. You got the same Holy Spirit and Bible that your preacher does. Why are you blaming it on him? Because it's become okay for us to play the blame game. At the end of the day, the creator God of the universe dwells within you. The Holy Spirit enlightens the perfect word of God to you. He speaks to you through his word. But the reality is, y'all, we don't like to listen to him sometimes. Because he says some things that don't feel so good. But love leads us to growth. Study God's word. So you got phones now that will read it to you. So, man, when you're driving down the road, literally, you can have the Word of God washing over you and helping you learn some new things. So, so we're very fortunate in this age. Secondly, lead your family spiritually. You teach the Bible in your home. Do you understand the church is just supposed to be a help to your family? They're not to be the disciples of your family. We're to help you disciple your kids. But at the end of the day, they spend way more time with you than they spend with us. Way more time with you. And so you have the opportunity as a normal part of your life, when you're watching TV, when you're eating dinner, when you're making decisions, when you're prioritizing goals, when you're disciplining them for some particular reason, make sure it's for a biblical reason. I remember... As a pastor, sometimes you're, you're, your kids are held to a higher standard than, than other kids. Uh, I think it's wrong. I think it's ridiculous. And I, I often said that in, from the pulpit. Uh, but, but one of the things I remember, I have one child that, that liked to do a lot of things with his hair. He would put blonde tips on it. Then he had dreadlocks for a while. I mean, the boy would do, and, and like people would come up to me and just think, man, are, are you okay with your, your son looking? I said, yeah, I'm okay with my son looking like that. <laughs> and then my daughter's got nose piercings. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with any of that stuff, and yet people want to focus in the church on stuff that don't matter. So make sure that you have biblical issues as you consider this. And so when you make decisions, make sure that they're biblical and they can be supported biblically. 
So if you're going to skip church because of a game, you better make sure you can support that biblically. If you're going to get into massive debt that puts your family into bondage financially, you better consider that spiritually. You see, the reality of it is if you're going to be a spiritual leader and you're going to lead your family spiritually, then the Bible's got to be the final authority. What it says goes. Okay? And so what does that mean? Sometimes we got to go back and have a family meeting and say, I'm sorry. I've said yes to things I should have never said yes to. I've said, I mean, I've gotten people in trouble. I'll never forget um, my old, youngest son. They decided they were going to move a football game to Wednesday. <laughs> we had Wednesday youth. I said, uh, so I had to send an email to the coach, man, I'm sorry. I know he starts, but, but he ain't going to be there. And this is why. And I had forgotten all about that, went on, just didn't do it. You know, that's just, that was a decision that we had made with our family a long time before. And later, whenever I took over the leadership of a nonprofit, he and I reconnected, and he reminded me of that. And he told me, and I just didn't, I didn't remember it. He said, you were so respectful. You were so matter of fact. But you just said, your son, my son ain't going to be there. He said, and you know, I didn't know what to do, but. It didn't, it didn't impact his playing time. It didn't impact him the week after. And I mean, everything happened just the way that God wanted it to happen. Y'all, we can trust him. Okay? So let's lead spiritually in these hard decisions. And, um, and so you need to be present if you're going to lead spiritually. And, and, and that doesn't mean your body just needs to be there. That means you need to be engaged. Now listen to me, men. Listen, I ain't meaning to hurt nobody's feelings. We cannot multitask. Men cannot multitask. I mean, I try. We can't. Like, I don't even know she's talking to me. So when it means be present, then that means eye contact. And that's what I have to tell Michelle. I said, baby, if you weren't looking me in the eye, you know I didn't hear you. So be present with your kids. I'll never forget coaching. When I was a coach back in the day, man, my son just kept calling me, talking to me, dad, dad, dad. And it wasn't until he called me Coach Smith that I heard him. So convicting. But listen, I, I also remember one time that Chelsea, in fact, uh, uh, I tried to, to learn to apologize well to my kids and apologize fully. And, and I said, baby, would you forgive daddy for what he did? She goes, no, not always. <laughs> I'm thinking, how many times have I come up here having to ask for that? I mean, it's just, it's just so real from that perspective. But sir, listen. So much in your home is caught rather than taught. So they listen to your words. They listen to your priorities. They listen to your political opinions. They listen to what you think about the preacher. They listen to what you think about the, 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 the uh, student director. Be careful. Make sure you're leading them uh, like Jesus. Act like men. So in the NIV, that's be men of courage. Okay, be men of courage. Be the protector and the provider of your home. The servant leader in your home. And, and, and I think as you recognize it, too many of us are acting like little boys who are still comparing guns. We are still focused on the wrong things, men, if we don't watch out. How much money we make, what kind of car we drive, you know, what kind of uh, ATV we have. I mean, we're, we're still comparing. Our guns are just way more expensive. And the reality of it is, is we're raising materialistic children and we don't even realize it. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's choosing to do the right thing despite your fears. And guys, I know it's hard to stand up against our friends. I know it's hard to say no to increasing debt. I know that it's hard to be different, but that's what God's called us to be. He says we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But if we're just like everybody else, what's going to make them consider Christ? If we never talk about Christ, what's going to make them consider Christ? If there's nothing about us that creates a thirst for Jesus, then why would they ask us about Jesus? We are God's plan for reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know people, I know people, we know people that need Jesus. 
God has made you the leader of your home, sir. And, and, and make sure that you understand this. Even if you don't have kids in here, you're a, you're a dad figure for a lot of kids. Coaches have that role. And, and, and a lot of us coach our kids, uh, rec teams, and so we have that opportunity to be salt and light uh, in, in those situations. There's adoption. There's foster cares. I mean, there's just a lot of you that play these vital roles as the dad figure in a lot of kids' lives. So choose to be creative, fighting against this world, the flesh, and the devil. Act like men. Be strong. You don't have to be weak in Christ. You don't have to. It's a decision that you have to make to stop the spiritual growth that God is already at work in trying to do in your life. You and God can do mighty things for his kingdom and glory. Amazing. And, And that's why we need role models. That's why I said at the beginning, if we just got 10 of us to get serious about this, we would begin to influence every man in this church every man. And if we can do it as a band of brothers and, and, and man, just hearing what happened in the man, cl- the man class this last semester in our adult ministries is a powerful example of what can happen in one semester in the church if we just step to the plate and do what God's called us to do. I mean, we need to be a man like Jesus, as, as Spurgeon said, powerful, protective, mature, and selflessly strong. We need to Grow our spiritual muscles from squirt guns to bazookas. Not for our glory, for his glory. We want to impact the world for his glory. So you got to study and be like Jesus. you got to invest time in learning to be like Jesus. It doesn't happen overnight. I mean, I, hey, I'm, I'm proud of all you people who run and work out and do all these things. Like, I ain't never been to a church where people do the triathlons. I mean, that just scares me even thinking about it. I mean, like, you know, I just do a, an athlon, and it wears me out. But, but you people are getting in shape. I mean, that's something to, to be proud of. That's awesome. You only got one body, and that body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so take care of it. I don't want to preach to myself now. I mean, that's enough. (laughs) One final choice, sir. Let all you do be done in love. That's the Greek word agape. It's a selfless, sacrificial love. It's a no-strings-attached commitment to act towards others in ways that helps them know Jesus and to grow in Jesus. We assume that they're not perfect because we're not perfect. So we give, we give one another grace. That's why we want that agape love from, from Jesus. So we've got to learn to love like Jesus. And so I end that with, are you even a Christian? You see, if our motive and driving passion is the love that we've experienced in Jesus, Are you even a Christian? This is impossible if you don't know Jesus. Many of you know my testimony. Y'all know the brokenness of my home. I grew up, my mom and dad got a divorce when I was two. She remarried my stepdad, the only dad that I've ever known whenever I was four. The only memory I have of my biological dad is when I was eight years old. My mom couldn't afford to buy us any shoes, and so, she, so he bought us a pair of tennis shoes and took us to a park in Garland, Texas. The only memory I have of him alive. When, he was, when I was 13 years old, he got shot to death by his seventh wife's ex-husband. He was married seven times from the time he was 19 till 32. So the generational sin patterns in my family's life are very real. And so for marriage to last for 39 years between Michelle and me is a miracle in our family. And if our goal is to have a multi-generational impact, we need Jesus to do that. And we can't be ashamed of him. We got to stand with him. We got to be the dude in the home. And so, so, so anyway, my whole life, I was seeking after acceptance. I was seeking after places where I, I, I was wanted. 
So sports became that place. It was a very wonderful place for me uh, where I just got to develop some, some, some confidence. And then when I was 16 years old, I broke my leg playing soccer and took sports away from me. So then I tried work. I mean I, I mean, I was in church from the time I was 10 years old because my mom put us on a bus ministry and she got three free hours of babysitting from her three boys. Praise the Lord. Well, they were giving away rainbow snow cones. Everybody got baptized, so I got me two of them. <laughs> and so I came in contact with the church, but I didn't come in contact with Christ. And so... Fast forward to, to, to uh, Michelle and I are now married. I'm 23 years old. We're in church. I was in church most of the time from the time I was uh, 10 years old. And they made me the youth Sunday school teacher. Well, I started reading Bible for the very first time because I didn't want to sound stupid when I was up there in front of those youth teaching the Bible. Well, little did I know that they didn't teach the Bible in this church, but that was a whole different story. Uh, Started reading the Bible to study and be prepared. Got saved. Didn't even know I needed to get saved because I thought I got saved because I prayed a prayer and got ducked in the baptistry when I was 10. Twice. It should have been enough. But nothing we do merits favor before a holy God. The only way a person can be saved is to admit that they're a sinner in need of a Savior. Man, admit, man, I'm a liar. I'm a thief. Even if you sell only a piece of bubble gum, gum, I dishonor my parents. I dishonor God by the decisions I make in my life. I am a sinner, and I can't fix myself. I can't save myself. So you believe or you trust in the finished work of Jesus alone as your only hope for forgiveness in heaven. What Jesus did, he did for you. He hung on the cross for you, not just the world. Your sin put him there. That's what you got to believe. you got to rely on his finished work. His sinless life, his cruel sacrifice, and his glorious resurrection. Because God is satisfied with his sin-bearing, wrath-removing sacrifice on behalf of everyone who repents and believes the gospel. It changes everything. In an instant of faith. You got to do that. Come to church, don't save nobody. I'm proof. Baptism don't save nobody. Having a position of authority and leadership in the church don't save nobody. And it certainly doesn't help you being a man of God to love like Jesus if you have not experienced his love. You see, what I think Paul is trying to say to us is just run back to the gospel. Be God's man. Be the man in your family and in your community. And that's only possible because of Jesus. Love like Jesus, the love that you've experienced in Jesus. I mean, he is not only God, he is the God man. And so ponder your decisions today. Let me tell you what I'm going to ask you to do. I, I don't ever remember what I put on this thing. This is the invitation. See, I I put it on there, all alone, just you and God. Y'all going to talk. Pray concerning what God showed you about you today. One of the things I love about reengage is it tells husbands and wives to stay in their circle. I don't need wives praying that their husbands will get it, okay? (laughs) Let God take care of them. Okay, husband, I don't need you saying, well, if she just would be respectful, I'd be the leader. No, it's on you. Okay, pray concerning what God showed you about you. Get saved, get right, go apologize, whatever you need to do. I mean, do you understand that for some families, Sunday mornings are like one of the most violent times in their family? Okay, because the devil don't want you growing. He don't want you around God's people. He don't want, he don't want you to be encouraged and charged up because you may go and represent Jesus out there. We only gather so we can be equipped to scatter to the ends of the earth for his kingdom and glory. We are his representatives wherever we're going to be this week. And we may very well be his plan to reach people. I got to quit, okay? Some need to get saved. Some need to get right. Go apologize, whatever. Ask God for the courage to be his man in your home and your community. And ladies, listen. Pray for yourself, the men and boys in your lives as well. 
Do you understand that a lot of men have given up on church because of the way that you judge them because they don't come to church? Be a gentle and quiet spirit at home. Pray for him. Just pray him out of that. Don't gripe him out of that. It don't work, I promise. It don't work. So just, just pray. So, so every head bowed, every eye closed, just pray. Do what God's called you to do, and then I'll close us in prayer, and then we'll do communion. Let's pray together. As the music starts, some of you may be, feel led to come to the altar. Feel free to do that. Some of you may go ask somebody to go pray for you. Feel free to do that. Some of you may want me to pray for you. I'll be honored to pray for you. So just do what God calls you to do. As the music plays, let's respond as God wants us to respond. Father, your word is clear. Concerning what you're calling us to be about as men. There are some here that are grieving the death of their dads. And, and maybe some that are grieving that they've never had a dad like, like this. God, let us not live in condemnation or despair. Let us run to Jesus fixing our eyes upon him because he is indeed the author and perfecter of our faith and who because of the joy set before him endured the cross show us how you're going to use the crosses that we bear for your kingdom and glory I ask that you would save souls in this place this morning that you would change lives God, where conviction has come, God, I pray that your people will deal with it today and not run from it. I pay, pray for a band of brothers that'll never be the same again. That we will stand for you even against opposition because you are worthy. I thank you that this life on earth does not compare to eternity, that this world is not our home. Let us act like that, God. We need your help. And so I cry out to you for every person that's hearing this, that you would revive, restore, awaken, save, heal, set free, humble, whatever you need to do so that we would be right with you and that we would grow in grace and truth. And oh, I pray for the men in here that you'd help us be dudes. Not chick dudes, but dudes. Strong and courageous. Selflessly loving. And that we'd act like men instead of little boys. You gotta do it, God, because it's not gonna happen on our own. And so I pray that you'll make it happen. 
Oh, God, I pray for a spirit of humility and faith in this room and for those listening online. Do what only you can do, I pray. For Christ's sake, amen. As a part of the packet that Mindy has prepared for you men is the verse from today's passage. So it's a bookmark. It's all it is. It's just something that you can put there to remind you maybe of what God has spoken into your heart today. So if you would, if you just uh, in the back, in the front, there are elements for the Lord's Supper. We're fixing to take the Lord's Supper. If you'll go ahead and, and get those, we'll begin that.